Hello YouTube, this is Birdo Prey 5 and I am back with my 100% impartial review of Captain Marvel trailer number 2. But it's the first trailer I've seen. And by 100% impartial, it means I literally know nothing about Captain Marvel. I've heard of her only through a couple of comments on other channels. I knew um, from somebody else who mentioned it that at the end of Infinity Wars that Nick was calling Captain Marvel before he disappeared, but that was it. I mean, I've never read a comic book about her. I've never read, in fact, I've never read any Marvel comic book as far as I know. My interest in the Marvel Universe has only been from their movies. I am a very casual Marvel fan. That said, I thought maybe it would be useful to have a review of a trailer from kind of a uh, common man's point of view and not a super fan's point of view. Um, because let's face it, if you're a super fan, you've already got preconceptions. I really don't. Okay, so let's just start. The trailer opens and there's a subway scene and the very first thing I'm thinking is I have no idea if this is happening in a real city or a fictional city but whatever city this is happening in that subway is much too clean I don't know where they are but I don't believe it okay the train fight scene that comes right after that I liked it. I liked the scene. It was predictable as anything, I think. I mean, I knew as soon as she was walking down that aisle that, um, and they showed the old lady, that old lady was getting decked in the face. And sure enough, it's exactly what happened. It makes sense. I don't mind predictability. Not everything can be a twist. I do think I did like the scene. It has peaked my interest a bit in the movie so I'm obviously I'm going to keep watching now this next scene this next scene was the worst part of the trailer for me because it's literally still the first impression and it's about the worst first impression you can make okay and here she corrects Nick to add the word hero to the description of her and her people he says, so you're warriors, and uh, she said, warrior heroes. And that is beyond smug. I mean, even Iron Man, I can't see adding the word hero to his description. Certainly not Superman or Wonder Woman or Spider-Man. Uh, none of the more humble heroes. Maybe, maybe, maybe Deadpool. Maybe, but... I mean, this is just the complete wrong impression you want to give someone to correct them and insert hero, okay? You don't get to call yourself a hero. Hero is a term somebody else has to, like, nominate you for. They call you a hero. You don't get to call yourself a hero. I'm sorry. And that just kind of set the wrong tone for me for the rest of this trailer. I, I wish they didn't have it in here. It might be funny part. It might be a funny part in the movie. But it's like already turned me off. Okay, so getting past that. We get a little backstory on uh, Captain Marvel. Uh, apparently... It looks like she was some kind of pilot, Air Force pilot, I assume. She crashed somewhere. It looked like Earth, but it seems like she was found by another species, perhaps, or really advanced humans, although the blood makes me think they're not human. And it turns out she was made, not born. So, okay, so she's not 
born on another planet. She was human, and they kind of made her into something. And for those of you who are fans of uh, superheroes, comics, and Marvel Universe, you might have known all this. I just, like I said, I have no clue. Everything I'm learning, I'm learning from the trailer. I'm a little confused at this point. Is like, it looked like she crashed on Earth, but she kind of looked like she was found by aliens. So I'm, I'm not sure what happened here. It looks like they said that, I think they said that she, uh, she had no memory. So I don't know if she literally had no memory or they brainwashed her. Because I'm, I'm still not sure if they are technically the good guys. Because I, I don't know. I, I literally don't know. And just a few seconds later, the woman who is talking to her, explaining about her past, about how she was made, she decides that she uses the word superior. They made her superior. Superior to humans is the obvious implication. And there's that smugness again. So maybe, uh, maybe it's a trait of the people. Maybe they brainwashed her into thinking she's superior. Certainly her abilities are superior. I will grant you that. She obviously has strength and special powers. So yes, she has superior abilities. But would Superman say he was superior to anybody else on Earth? I don't, I don't think he would. So to describe her as superior, yeah, it kind of makes me think that maybe these aren't the good guys. Um, maybe they're not bad guys, but they're not classic good guys. I've got some hesitation there. I'm also a bit confused as to where they found her at this point. I'm, I'm starting to worry it's on Earth because... It clearly looked like she crashed on Earth, but then this clearly looks like another advanced civilization that obviously no one on Earth knows about. And I'm, I'm kind of worried that this is like a, a white Wakanda. I mean, an entire another place on the globe where an entire civilization exists, hidden from hidden from humanity all these centuries. It just, they did that already. They did that with Black Panther. I can't imagine they're really doing that again, but I just, my brain is, doesn't have an explanation yet because I guess it just doesn't have enough information. So I'm hoping it's not white Wakanda, but um, it sure seems like it at this point. Okay, the next scene... It just seems a bit unnecessary that she had to be held upside down to get her brain fixed or brainwashed or whatever they're doing to her. But I'm not one to argue with white Wakanda technology. I just seemed unnecessary. Okay, after that, uh, it's official that she was in the U.S. Air Force that she was flying planes on Earth, okay? And I don't think the Stargate universe is owned by Marvel, but that would be awesome, right? I will have to send a suggestion to Disney to buy Stargate because that would be a great addition to the Marvel universe. So she's on Earth... I'm, I'm really thinking that she was found on Earth, and I'm, I'm still confused. Okay, so now we're in a hangar scene with her and Nick, and the plane in the foreground, you know, closer to the camera, is clearly a B-2 stealth bomber. So we have contemporary plane in this hangar, but in front of it is a plane I really can't tell what it is. Is it a classified aircraft? That's fine. But like we said, this isn't Stargate, so it's not a death glider or uh, an F-302. And uh, yes, that is a, a Stargate aircraft 
For those of you who haven't gotten that far in Stargate yet, you know who you are. Okay, next scene I liked. Uh, this whole back and forth. Uh, do you know how to fly this? We'll see. That was a yes or no question. And then yes. And the plane shoots out. I liked that scene. I enjoyed it. Um, I don't know what plane it is. It's clearly um, in from the cockpit. You can see it's clearly contemporary human technology. But once we get to see the outside of the plane, it's clearly not an active duty military aircraft we know of. It could be, uh, it could be classified. That's fine, but that plane to me certainly doesn't look like it could get, get out of orbit. Uh, I don't think it could be a space fighter, but I don't, I don't know. I don't know. It just looks too low tech inside to be uh, traveling around the, uh, the solar system, let alone the galaxy. And then the very next scene, just a few seconds later, they are in deep space, so I have no idea what I'm talking about. I don't know if that plane got them there or they got beamed up somehow, but uh, she's in deep space, apparently, uh, fighting aliens or, or doing something. I'm happy to see space is involved because now I'm starting to think that maybe that civilization that... Uh, turned her into whatever she is isn't on earth but I'm just still confused okay after that we have somebody asking uh, who sounds like a bad guy asking if you would like to know who you really are and um, we're seeing scenes if they're flashbacks or not I'm not 100% sure but you, she's definitely in an Air Force uniform. She seems surprised. She's looking at her hand. It's covered in blue blood. And it's like she's shocked. Like she doesn't expect her blood to be blue. So I don't know if this is a dream, a flashback. If this is really happening, then like... How would she know, how, when would be the point in her life where she would be surprised her blood was blue? Because if it was right after these people fixed her up and turned her blood blue, then she should have no memory of her past life as an airline, Air Force pilot. Um, so she certainly wouldn't be back in the Air Force. But here she is. So I, I don't know. I'm, I'm confused. And then we see this bad guy, I think, who was talking, and he's got big pointy ears and an ugly face, and he looks like he could be a Reman out of uh, Star Trek Nemesis. I have no idea who he is or his species, but I'm going to call him a Reman from now on. Okay, after that, she's in, uh, looks like a regular... Uh, Air Force building, not in space, on Earth. She's reading classified documents from a low-tech paper binder. And um, it's talking about how she thinks she had a life here. And I'm thinking, yeah, we all, we're all up to that point, okay? The movies, the, the, the trailers already showed us you had a life as an as a Air Force pilot. Just after that, there's another plane that looks mysteriously futuristic on the outside, but once they go inside, it looks like a contemporary cockpit with, you know, technology that would be in F-14 or F-15. So I'm, I'm confused as to just the technology level of some of these planes. Okay, then she sees what I assume is an Air Force version of a dog tag. It has her name on it, which used to be Carol, and then some last name that starts with D-A-T. I don't know if it's Dates or Dayton or what. I, I've never heard of her before, but I suppose it means something to her. Next, we see a, uh, a male of her species, I assume. 
He's got the same symbol on his chest. He seems like he knows more about her history than she does. At first, I thought he was kind of a bad guy with his uh, voice, but now I'm not so sure. Okay, so the, the next scenes we see are her as a child. She's falling off bicycles, falling off of, I don't know, a park, uh, I don't know, swings or something. I forget, but she's falling down a lot. So it's showing us she wasn't always the perfect athlete. Uh, she's even falling down in the Air Force. So she's, she's not perfect. Um, she, she wasn't born perfect. So I assume that's what they're trying to uh, portray to us. That she, um, she wasn't always superhero material. Which is fine. I mean, the fact that they made her, I kind of realized that already. But, fine. Now the scene where the text changes from it all begins with her. And then they add cleverly an A at the beginning of her and an O after her. So it says, with her to with a hero. I feel like Cinema Sins would give that two cents. Just saying. Didn't really mean anything one way or the other, but that's, that's just my feeling. Okay, so next we see kind of the continuation of the scene where she was always falling down. We see each time she falls down, she gets back up. I understand what they're trying to portray, but I think it was pretty obvious that she always got back up already. Um, but it's good. It's a good scene. I, uh, it's nice to see her uh, overcoming uh, hardship. I'm more curious about her quote, I won't fight your war, I'm going to end it, which sounds badass, but then it appears like she's fighting it. So I, I know it's, it's a trailer, and I've got to give it a wide berth, because the way they edit scenes together in a trailer might have nothing to do with the actual movie. I, I know that. Um, but I hope they don't take away from the badassery of that quote by making her do the thing that she just said she wasn't going to do in the movie like they seem to do in the trailer but I like it that was a good that was a good quote I just hope it it rings true okay so after that we get to the most memorable scene of this trailer the cat scene you've got the orange cat and Nick bends down and he steals the, uh, steals the scene, if not the entire trailer, by being all cutesy with the cat. Probably a little unexpected. I've got to be honest, I was waiting for the cat to scratch his eye out. Uh, because we know in Infinity Wars, he's only got one eye. I don't think we know why he lost his eye yet. I certainly don't. Maybe you people who read the comic books or know more about it know why. But I, the whole time from when I first saw him in this trailer and noticed he's not wearing an eye patch yet, I'm wondering, is this the movie he loses an eye? And uh, it was just in the back of my mind. And then when they bring to this cat scene at the end, I was like, oh, wouldn't it be cool if the cat scratches him in the eye or something? And he didn't really, maybe he didn't really lose the eye. He just needed to have a patch on for like six weeks while the eye healed or something. I, I don't know. But I thought that was going to happen. It didn't. That's fine. Maybe it happens in the movie. But um, that's what I was hoping for. Even without the eye gouge, that was the most memorable part of this trailer for me. Being all cutesy with the cat. And then Carol, I guess we'll call her. I don't know, she's not in costume at this point, so Captain Marvel uh, slash Carol kind of like gives him the, uh, hey, we've got to, we've got to get going. And, um, you know, I thought that was a well-acted scene for both of them. So that is basically the entire trailer. Will I see this movie? Yes, I'll, I'll see the movie. Will I see the movie in March? No, no. 
Um, even if hypothetically I could get to a movie theater, like many of the Marvel movies, I'm just not that big a fan for a casual fan as myself. I am happy to see it when it gets to streaming or DVD, but there's nothing here making me want to go see it right away. And I know, I know I'm not the audience. If you're listening to this, you are probably the super fan. And you're going to want to go see it. Or you're going to hate the movie. You're going to have one of those two things. You're either going to love it or you're going to hate it. And I don't know which. I don't care which, to be, to be honest. My personal review, my personal feeling, it's a, it's a decent trailer. It's not the best trailer. Its major flaw, flaw was right in that beginning with the uh, smugness correcting him to add hero to her name or her title or her species. It never quite recovered, but it's really all going to depend on how Brie Larson, Brie Larson plays, plays this character. Uh, there's not enough in the trailer to tell. Some parts of the trailer... She seems spot on. I could be, I could believe her to be a uh, badass superhero. Other parts of the trailer, it's like she's too much, I don't know, valley girl or something that I just don't find it believable. But those could be parts purposely thrown in there to throw you off. We know Marvel does things like that. And those scenes in the movie, you know, you don't know what happens before she becomes Captain Marvel, what happens after. So, there's room. I think it's a decent a decent trailer. It could have been better, for sure. You know, I'm interested. Compared to Infinity War, certainly less interested than Infinity Wars. Less interested than Deadpool or Deadpool 2. About as interested as I was in most of the X-Men movies, uh, especially the more recent ones. I'd put this I put this up there with Logan, which I waited until it came to streaming to see. Uh, I wasn't in any particular rush, but I was happy I saw it when I did. I'd put it up there with Black Panther, which... I thought it was a good movie. I didn't think it was as great as the uh, as great a review as so many people gave it, but it was good. It was solid. So that's that's my opinion. I don't know why you should care. I honestly don't. I just felt like I felt like I should give a a review from somebody who's not a a super fan. Uh, with that, I hope that the next thing I review will be either a Star Trek or Stargate uh, movie or episode or something like that. That's really more my forte. And uh, have a good day, everyone. Kapla.